Winter is coming. Welcome back, my super crew. Winter is coming. Winter is already here. It's not even Halloween yet. Oh, man. Speaking of Halloween, did you see my spooky catacomb crawl video? Not WRX related. But I'll put a link here if you're interested anyway. It's October. Thought I'd put something fun on there. So what are we doing today? Because winter is upon us, let's get some all season floor mats. These are Odro. I don't know. Why do my boxes always show up like they've been through a war zone? We'll open those up, see what they look like, and get them put in. They are supposed to be WRX specific, so hopefully we get a good fit. Also, I'll give you an update where I am with the flex fuel setup and maybe some other things we can go over for a October update video. Let's check it out. Also, if you like 2015 and up WRX stuff, please browse through my channel, see if any of those videos interest you, and consider subscribing. Exciting floor mats, oh boy. They're all in one piece. Nice. Now, you ready for a mess? Pretty messy in here. We'll get that vacuumed out. As you can see, I've had this car for four years. It's getting about all the way worn through this mat here. Let's get that cleaned up, see what the new ones look like in there. Holy crap. That was wore all the way through. Whoops. All right, let's get it cleaned up in here. Here's also something kind of cool. Pick myself up a foam kneeling pad. It's kind of nice doing work around the car. Kneel on here, getting it vacuumed out. I'm just reg using a regular house vacuum. And you want to use an attachment like that with a brush on it so you can agitate the carpet and help bring it up. A lot better than it was, not perfect, but we'll get it a little more cleaned up, maybe clean up the trim pieces as well while we're down here. And so you got the two hooks on each side that hold the factory floor mat. Now the new ones should have those same hole locations so they'll stay in place so you're not tripping around on that. Just gave it a good once over. A lot better than it was at least. And let's try out this guy. Now, has anyone else tried this brand? How does it compare to WeatherTech? Let's find out. Let's see if these line up with the fingers in there. All right. So move your seat back all the way so you can get to those finger locations to hold it in place. It covers your dead pedal there. Get some good coverage. So I was wearing a hole right about there. Um, hopefully this plastic will stand up a lot better. When you got snowy, wet feet, keep the carpet underneath nice and dry. But look at that fitment, yeah. It contours pretty well. Let's put in the back and the passenger side. All right, we got the floor mats in. Got it all vacuumed out. Let's see what the passenger side looks like. I'm pretty happy. It lines up pretty well to meet the angles of how it was from the factory. Looking pretty good. It also does include one piece to go across all of the back. Then go
going over the drive set shaft location is covered as well. And back there, pretty cool. Since that floor mat video wasn't very long, I wanted to show you guys some other stuff I got going on. I picked up a big boy camera. This is a Canon M50. Doing a little bit of research, it was pretty highly recommended as a good camera for beginning YouTubers. What's cool about it also, has a flip screen. That way I can tell if I'm in frame or not. Pretty cool, I have a lot to learn about this thing. But the rest of the video's uh, footage from today will be shot on this. And we'll see if that footage looks a little bit better. So I have got some questions about the hood scoop. So this is the big mouth hood scoop. Uh, mostly your guys' questions were about the seal on it and whether or not it's gonna let water in. Now first of all, you gotta keep in mind the, even the factory hood scoop, though it's not as big, you're getting a certain amount of water in there from the very beginning. So this just used the 3M tape that I sealed all the way around. Now, I noticed some spaces on the tape did want to lift up a little bit. I would say if you were going to go this route to Keep an eye on it the first few days you have it put on and just keep applying pressure to it. It's probably not 100%, but it's pretty close. Some people wondered if they should put silicone on it. Really, I don't think you should do that and you're just gonna run a risk of damaging your paint because I had this Vortex generator and it was just 3M tape and it's been on there for years. Has been pretty fine. Hasn't blown off yet. So, I trust the tape. Oh yeah, some of you guys wanted to see what it looked like from the inside. It's big, spoiler alert. So there's the mat out in the sun on the driver's side. So, from the driver's seat. Yep, it's big. Yes, I still have a lovely crack in my windshield. What else have I been thinking about? So there's the wing, I absolutely love it. However, if you saw that video, I made a mistake on ordering the WRX one, not the STI one. So the replica wing I had was using the STI location. Bolts, so I ended up just having to cover those up. And I'm not really satisfied because you can still kind of see the indentation where that is. And I didn't do the best job. It's not 100%. See, I have some gapping here. It's putting some undue pressure on this because it's not completely straight. So, maybe in the future I will get a Cybon carbon fiber deck lid for the trunk. What do you guys think? Comment below if you think that's something I should do. Then I'll have a second chance on getting this wing exactly how I like it. Ooh, I got me some Evil X stickers. That adds three horsepower per sticker. So what's going on with the flex fuel tune? Well, tunes are expensive, so I want to get everything right and just how I want it before I get back on the dyno. So now what I'm kind of considering is a high fret, a high pressure fuel pump. So under this cover here, there's a metal plate and then some foam down there. So I'm thinking about getting the Nostrum, actually I've already ordered it, the Nostrum high pressure fuel pump. Now, the reason you would want that is because the factory high pressure fuel pump, so again, high pressure fuel pump is up there. In uh, one of my other videos, I replaced the low pressure fuel pump. Now that's the one that's actually in the gas tank under the rear seat. So that's already been upgraded and it can handle the ethanol. But we would have to blend 
down to like E60 for it to work with the factory high pressure fuel pump um, because that's all it's capable of. The Nostrum one was a hard pill to swallow. It was like 900 bucks. But in the long run, I think it'll be worth it because I won't be having to mix the regular pump gas with the E85 to get to the E60 blend that I want. So we'll put that on. Some other things I want to get in place before the tune. Now, after the last tune, I actually switched back to the factory turbo inlet assembly because I had a intercooler pipe come off on the way home. Turns out the car went into limp mode, but I was also, I put this on after the tune. My dam level went down a little bit, so I'm just erring on the side of caution. I took it off, but I'm gonna put it back in. I might see if I can find a metal pipe coupler that'll work better over there. We'll get the plugs changed before the next tune, NK, NGK. I believe this is the same type it comes from, Subaru. Um, what else we got? I got some VP Racing fuel jugs for the E85. Let me show you those. Oh man, random stuff just strewn all about the house. So, we got four of these. In hindsight, I wish I would have not got white. <laughs> those are gonna show dirt really bad when I have them in the garage. Interesting, the fuel nozzle attachment point. You can actually just put in a uh, half inch drive. So if you have that like on your electric drill, you can just zip those out. Then this package did come with fuel fillers for each one. So we got four of those. Now, since I'm going to have the Nostrum high pressure fuel pump, I'm probably not gonna need this. This was supposed to help lubricate the high pressure fuel pump but the nostrum one is going to be capable of up to e100 so probably not going to buy more than this in the future i think it's like an ounce per five gallons it'll also stabilize the fuel probably make it last a little longer as well and like i said it was just meant to also help lubricate the high pressure fuel pump Back outside again. As you can see, my top mount oil cooler still isn't reinstalled. Let me explain why. I've been putting it off quite some time because I was just so disappointed with it. Long story short, don't buy the CX Racing oil cooler. I just kind of have it wrapped up so um, it doesn't get any oil in anywhere else because there is still oil in the cooler. So, one of the AN fittings broke when I was trying to adjust it. So originally after I put it on, it did start leaking pretty quickly thereafter. So it has to do with the two sandwich plates. So these two guys go on top of the oil filter. Then they'll circulate the oil through there, through the lines, cooling off the oil, going back in. Now the problem is this thing, if you were to really look at it and I, ended up getting a caliper it is not straight or not level from side to side as in one side was taller than the other so the o-ring wasn't seating properly i ended up sanding with a variety of different sandpapers um, to try to smooth it out i have video clips of that i might do another video on this and hopefully eventually get this thing working then i wasn't able to get the included uh, o-ring back in. So actually this one I pulled out of a cheap Fram oil filter. If you were to look all the way around, it's, it's not level due to the machining process of this piece. So something important like this, you're dealing with oil, you're dealing with making a huge mess, probably don't go cheap with the CX Racing. On here as well, this o-ring, doesn't fit very well. I'm still might search and see if I can find a better one. So hopefully eventually I'll put a video together all about that and get it running. Cause I did put a lot of work into the stenciling and I think it looks really cool when it is in place. But if you really want an oil cooler, 
by a Mishi Moto 1. So the eye doing head unit, so far so good, really liking it. This is just a demo video that came with the unit. So the picture quality is amazing, it looks great. I'm not sure how well it transfers through my camera, but it is a great screen. One thing that's funny that I noticed, so since I got this thing, it's back out of there. Okay, we got the rear view camera working all fine. But now that we got this huge ass dis display, like with that image blown up, it looks really pixelated and pretty crappy. But it's not the display, it's just the cheap camera. And I was wondering, have any of you guys switched out that camera? Do you know if Subaru has a direct replacement camera that would fit without too much splicing or anything like that that has a higher resolution? Just curious, something to know move it a little bit maybe you can kind of see yeah <laughs> that camera is not so great old floor mats know where you go and up in the shit pile hey thanks for watching my video just a quick update video today if you like this sort of stuff browse through my channel see if any of those videos on there is something that interests you and consider subscribing We'll see you next time, and I'm out.